Hey, hello, let's hang. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Ripe for Discourse with Connor Marr. I am Connor Marr, your host and Ripe fan, dumb liaison. Today, we are going to talk about what this show is, what this show could be, and most importantly, the band Ripe. Today's guest is Samson Hellerman, drummer of the band. I got a bunch of questions for him, Ripe and non-Ripe related. I want to give you all who is listening what's up thank you for listening i want to give you all a chance to get to know these guys a little better learn more about the band but also them as individuals in the band and in the community which i think is something that the band tries to promote individuality so yeah We'll talk about individuality, perspective, but also, like, what do they like on their hot dogs? Do they even like hot dogs? And without me rambling on, let's start there. Samson Hellerman, do you like hot dogs? Um, you know, I don't think I really fuck with, like, your textbook sort of, you know, gray meat boiled in water New York City street dog, which I'm a New Yorker and, you know, I, yeah, I don't really fuck with those. I respect like a really nice grilled hot dog you know outside grilled toasted bun i really fuck with like a sausage you know like like peppers and onions there you go i so so i think you know hot dog is sort of a it's sort of an umbrella term sure sure yeah 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 um so fen- <laughs> are, 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 i mean you're a boston guy are you are you eating fenway franks like what's your deal i uh, i think the sausages outside of fenway are fucking awesome i think they're awesome i think it's like one of the best things you can eat and i didn't have them but when i was in la recently i realized that it's a big thing in la that they sell bacon wrapped hot dogs on the street wow um some festival is, food uh, shit. pretty smart pretty smart sick well so you did grow up in new york now let's get into a little bit of your story pre-ripe um uh, pre-ripe if there even is a time because didn't you and tori get together pretty young yeah tori and i got together pretty young um doing the musics and uh you know we played in a bunch of bands together growing up just sort of hit the little new york circuit we used to play a lot of carnivals out in long island let's go um, you know, <laughs> you know, some of the dingy, dingy downtown venues in New York. Um, we did the thing. Yeah. What? All right. And so just quickly, what were some of the band names or like, what was the best one? You, you really, you really had to do this. <laughs> I had to, I oh, dude, understand. Like, so I obviously have always been a huge fan of bands. So like my friends, middle school, like ninth grade band forever Friday. Gosh. Oh. And then they switched to against all odds. Like, are you kidding me? Wow. Dude. Forever Friday. What a, what a banger of a name. What a banger. Dude, they threw Connor Marr in the lyrics of one of the songs. I was just, wow. I mean, obviously I was a huge wow, fan. They're, they're upping us. I, I, trust me. I'm, I'm just waiting for the day. And I feel like we rep Connor Marr pretty hard. Pretty hard, so, yeah. Pretty hard, yeah. yeah. Names of bands that we what? were in. The, oh, God, I hate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> we had a band called Creation. Sick. The trio. Um, where, that we were in when we were really young, and that band ultimately turned into a band called Rose and the Thorns. Also a shitty name. I played in a band called Sins of the Loose Buttons. Wow. Really complicated name. Sins. You know, but but honestly, yeah. you know, this becomes relevant because, you know, when it was time to name Ripe, yeah. you know, Tori and I had this fucking list, like a, a, a physical list yeah. of band names. Because we were in, we we had been in a band called Sweet Lucy, which I actually think is a sick band name. It's actually kind of a sick band name. For the listener at home, Sam has now rearranged and now has a beautiful little sloth behind him. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my FaceTime. It's actually in an extremely inopportune spot in the house, but it's such a great sloth. It's a good sloth. So, are you are you a FaceTime guy? Are you a text guy? Are you a call guy? I actually hate FaceTime, um, which which 
it's been a problem for me <laughs> in my life. Uh, I'm not going to specify with who because it doesn't matter. But, sure. You know, I've had some. I've had some issues with my lack of uh, FaceTime enjoyment. I don't know, man. There's something that feels weird about it to me. Dude, I I don't know what it is. I get that, but I think because like Tori is such a big like, FaceTime Tor- guy, like. Yeah. That made me FaceTime more. And then, like, when Sierra and I, my girlfriend for the listener at home, when the uh, when we first started, like, talking to each other, the first day that we started talking to her that night, I was like, yo, can I FaceTime you so I can, like, see that you're a legitimate person and not just, like, swapping DMs? So and then we ended up talking for two hours. So I low-key... Have an appreciation, but at the same time, having also done like a long distance thing with that, it's a lifesaver, yeah. but it's also just like so not the real thing. It's like, yeah, it's 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 yeah, yeah, I heard it's a mysterious fig. Um, all right, and in today, you know, today's age of quarantine, it's sort of uh, true. I think I need to get like a little more down with it. Yeah, I saw like Josh posted today. That he's like, yo, I'm FaceTiming anyone. Hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, it's, on it. it's, a vi- it's definitely a vibe. Um, all right. Well, I'll let you escape from the questions of Tori and you's band name. Wait, no, no. You were getting into the naming of Rife, which is, like, quality information. <laughs> which is quality information. Yeah, I mean, we just we had this list of band names. And um, I think that... Nothing has ever felt as obvious as the name of this band. You so, know what I mean? It was like, like there was no question that was the name of the band. Now it came out of like produce the juice, right? Actually, produce the juice came out of ripe. We ha- we have the name ripe on our on our little list of band oh. names from you know always trying to fucking name bands growing up. Yeah, and it was just obvious that that was the name. So you know, immediately we sort of leaned into the fruit thing a little bit, and you for know, sure, produced the juice kind of came out of that. Aren't you so happy um, that the title of this podcast isn't getting juicy with right? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, the previous name was freshly squeezed, but there's already a podcast called Freshly Squeezed. So you know, can't win them all. Can't win, we them can't win them all. You know. <laughs> all right. So we've asked some non ripe related questions, but let's and we've well we just talked ripe. Okay, here. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Can we get real? I'm, I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. You're starting a game of Pokemon: Squirtle, Charmander, or Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Wow, that is an interesting call. Yeah. Really? You're a grass type Pokemon. I'm a grass type guy. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. Weed is tight. Weed I, is... Yeah, weed is tight. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know so, that. I don't know why that's so surprising. I feel like that. Uh, I'm just you know, such like, a squirrel okay, guy through and through. Yeah. I'm starting a game of Pokemon Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur before I answered that question. What am I going with? No, what did you think I was going to go with? Oh. I think I was just really intrigued. I mean, I could see you as a fiery Charmander. One, just because, you know, I think he's a little bit of a show-off and just a cutie and you like your... Wow. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) I don't know. Like, maybe I just don't under... I'm just so Squirtle through and through. And also, I feel like you... such a Squirtle. (laughs) I mean, I'm a water. I'm a water guy. I'm such a Squirtle. I'm liquid, you know? You're such a Squirtle. (laughs) These are the hard-hitting questions we're going to ask on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, next, next question. <laughs> next question. All right, here we go. When were you on stage and you were like, oh, shit, this is, uh, this is definitely real. This isn't just, you know, L- sweet Lucy. This isn't sins of a <laughs> whatever the other sins person. of the loose button. Sins of the loose button. Hey, I mean, I rarely button up my shirt, so I get it. Uh, <laughs> man, that's an interesting question. I don't know because you know I can remember the really early shows in Boston. You know, when we were still in college and we were, 
you know, just playing on, on the weekends or even weeknights to, you know, little to no people. Um, but I still remember those shows feeling as important as, you know, House of Blues. You know, it's like it, it it's always felt um, like the most important thing in the world. So, so I, I under, you know, I Do definitely you... understand the question and I can sort of, you know, I mean, there was a obviously a tangible moment you know, sort of in the last two, three years where more people started coming and the room started getting bigger. But um, it always felt like it's real, it's happening, we've got it, whatever that, whatever it is, mm-hmm. like we've got something worth doing. My brother will always give me shit when I'm, well, not like always give me shit, but like, you know, as I get into, like, my mode of, like, talking like a fish fan about ripe shows and just being like, oh, God, should have been there. You missed that one. And, like, he's just like, oh, yeah, dude, Firefly, second set of the thing, dude. And I'm just like, dude, that was a ripper of a show. We were in good. <laughs> like, uh, and, like, I just... I already see, like, what my personality is going to be, like, five years from now. <laughs> I'm just still just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You and your brother, the Mars. Good fans. Unbelievable. Hi. Good, yeah, good family. Good family. <laughs> uh, I had such a good time, like, watching him at House of Blues and uh, Webster Hall just, like, interact with you guys and just be, like, way too comfortable. Because now I don't have to be, like... All right, so like, just like be really cool and like, do, and he's just like, dude, I know all of these people now, and I'm like, oh. yeah. I'm like, all right, fine, do whatever well, the fuck you want. Atlanta was fun, dude. Atlanta, all Atlanta, right? Atlanta was sick. Atlanta was sick because that was like, also like a fun time, because it's one that I was like as an audience member like the way that the venue was set up it's like there was like that little pit area then there were seats and we just like grabbed on the front rail of those seats but we were like eye level with the stage but i wasn't like mashed in between all the people so i kind of like just got to watch a show rather than like be fully engaged like trying to get people but i mean that was a fun night dude that was a great night and you got me so good. Oh, my God. Classic Mar surprise. Classic Mar surprise. Waiting for an Uber, and you <laughs> just come out of this car and, like, uh, Oh, yeah. I, uh, for the people that are listening, since we are recording, <laughs> um, I did not tell them that I was coming to the Atlanta show and just popped up. They were literally waiting for an Uber, and... I guess the guy drove by one time. <laughs> I thought you were our Uber. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, this must be out. And I pop out and I go, you fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Uh, that was back when people went places. Yeah, back, yeah, exactly. Yeah, back in the day. Well, dude, by the time back this airs, day. this will all be over, I'm sure. Oh, God, I hope so. I know. I mean, I was going to ask, like, so do you think, like, you kind of, like, even when, like, no one, well, not no one, but, like, people weren't showing up as much, your name was now there, you think that just comes from, like, what, maybe being at Berkeley and, like, understanding the business of it all? I can only speak for myself that I don't think I understood shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you know? I don't think, yeah. <laughs> but I do know that, you know, nothing has ever been the same even, like, remotely as important to me, or, you know, I, I don't want to speak for anyone, because sure, sure, everyone sure. will have their, their own chance, but nothing has ever even competed with, you know, playing in a band for me, so when this was the band that we were in, that was it, like, that was all that yeah really mattered, um, and there were, I mean, I remember the shows where it was, like, my fucking roommate was the only person there. Mike Platt. Shout out to Mike Platt. But, shout out Mike Platt. Um, you know, like, yeah, I heard him. He, he whooped. I heard him. Before. Yeah, let's go. Um, but <laughs> like, even those shows, it was like, okay, there's sort of an understanding of like why I'm here, which is to play music with this band. Yeah. So, you know, it's always like you have a, you know, you have a product you're proud of. And you want to rep the shit out of it. So that's sort of what it's always been. It's like, you know, 
whoever's in the room, we're going to put on the best show we can. For sure. Which I think to this day is, you know, one of the best things about this band is it's like, we will at least always do our best. Did. No matter what the show is, <laughs> I, no matter what the vibe is, like, we'll give it our all. I, I mean, I ha- I've seen it on... <laughs> <laughs> and from the highest of the highs to 80 yeah. people in Oklahoma City, and I love that show. Oh, my God. Dude, it was, oh, it was so great, because it was just, like, right after House of Blues, and then it was just, like... It's so incredibly deflating, but, hey, but we still gave it our best, Yeah, you know? I mean, the thing is, like, at that show, like, I just love, because I interact with the fans so much, and I am one, like, I love seeing, like, who comes out to the shows and, like, get... And, like, that, like, there's probably, like, five to six, <laughs> the wide range of five to six. Like, there's, like, five to six kids. <laughs> yeah. Five to ten. Five to ten. People from the uh, Oklahoma University OU Go Sooners band. And, like, you get a lot of band kids. It's not just, like, a bunch of bros from fucking UMass all the time. <laughs> Nothing right. against that. This is true. This is true. But, yeah. like... I mean, yeah. <laughs> I remember when we were at Levitate, you just go, no, no. you're like, this is like your festival. And I was like, yeah, that's how I know of you guys. It's because, you know, there's a part of me that's just a white dude who loves like white reggae and jam bands and then some funky horn stuff. And You are, you are our demographic. Yeah. Like, you are, you are like well, that, I mean, it's the like, iconic <laughs> person for our demographic but i'm not saying anything people didn't already know yeah (laughs) this is is, is no yeah this is no all right talking about that getting real for a moment first time feeling doesn't exactly hit my demographic sure i love it i get to sing it to my girlfriend at shows and then when you know other times and it's just and it's a beautiful song um but it's not ripping goon squad ripping you know right. flip side so heard what's the deal what's the deal <laughs> all of that to ask a very profound question what's the deal i i i totally understand the question you know i think that oh yeah give me a professional answer don't just talk yeah. to me give me a really just throw shit at the wall yeah I, mean, I don't think that we have it in us to ever settle into okay and this is the type of music we make i don't really think we're that kind of band you know i think that um we're seven guys who you know are all consistently trying to figure out our own musical identities Mm -hmm. as well as our collective musical identities and i mean there are things that we know we love to do and there are types of songs that we know you know some you know like we know a little lighter we can you know hopefully make people jump and you know something like a pretty dirty hopefully we can make people sway and you know like i i started to think about things a lot in terms of you know from the drums you know like how are people going to physically respond to the song you know or is this a toe tapper is this a fucking you know head banger is it jumping up and down yeah and like something like that comes into like writing a set list and realizing course, you can't right. just put ripper after ripper after ripper totally um but you know i think that you know we're we're different people than we were three years ago when we recorded Jitwoo, and i mean we're different people than we were when we recorded first time feeling True. in the summer you know it's like it's, it's almost cliche to say artists change and they you know but they do they they really do and we are we are actively changing and you know first time feeling you know it the first time i heard it it was a demo that robbie sent me and i immediately was like i like this needs to be a fucking ripe song not because it sounds like a ripe song but because it's a dope song yeah and at the end of the day you know what we're trying to do is write the best songs possible and in our mind it's not like okay but it needs to conform to this or that you know we want it to be just a great song at least what we feel is a great song we can't you know that's not an objective description of anything but we just want to put out the best music we can and that was sort of what was just on our cue when we were writing and recording in that time and i mean obviously we're all seeing now, you know, how quickly people and things change. I mean, that was a different world when we recorded that song. And, um, 
you know, there's a lot of songs on the burner right now that'll sound nothing like First Time Feeling and will also sound nothing like Goon Squad. So, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's an ever-evolving process. For sure. All right. Thank you for that. Appreciate your time. Now, I hope that was professional enough for you. <laughs> well, I really didn't want you to get professional. I just wanted to talk. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Here we go. A little bit calmer, easier questions, whatever that may mean. Ten-year-old Samson Hellerman has a lunchbox with his favorite Never shit. Happened. I know, I know, I know, I know. Pretend. Pretend you're in Wonder Years, okay? And you're going off to school in the 1980s, and, and you have, like... Iron Maiden on your lunchbox. You have, like, the Red Sox on your lunchbox. Like, what is, when you were, not now, when you were a younger kid, like, and you were, like, 10, 11, 12, like, what was your shit? Okay, so what's that, just to, to frame the question yeah. for, for the listeners, you're asking... <laughs> What stickers are on my lunchbox? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What stickers are on yeah, your drum or right. on your drum kit? That's probably right. okay. All right. Doesn't have to be musical, but it totally can be. I mean, uh, what I don't. I was it's not like I was really into anything else, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was and still am a big Boston sports fan, a sports fan in general. Even though I've never really rocked sports stickers, so yeah, that's you know that's a, another conversation but so all the music i you know come from came from my dad and mm -hmm. when i say come from i you know i do mean like what did i listen to that made me say okay like i want to do that yeah. right um pinpoint songs i remember listening to won't get fooled again by the who and being like what the fuck oh my god you know you listen to that and you're like hey you know i love the who but i, I you know i don't like consider myself you know it's like ezra you know you know one of the guys on our crew i'm sure you all know ezra, Shout out like ezra like the who's his band you know and it's not necessarily my band but i remember listening to the who as a kid and being fucking blown away um i was also that was you know when i started getting grateful dead sort of shoved into my ears and, and i mean it really was at 10 where i was starting to hear drumming you know i was really like it was starting to stick out to me so it was things like you know derek and the dominoes like totally. you know keep on growing by derek and the dominoes i mean i remember at at the time being 10 years old and being obsessed with that album and feeling like almost embarrassed by it because, like, I even, I didn't know at the time that it was, you know, dad music. But, it, well, I guess I knew it was dad music at the time, but I guess I didn't know that, like... Dad music was dad a genre. Music, dad music fucks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you're talking to one of the biggest Steely Dan fans. <laughs> right, I know, I was just thinking, like, Steely Dan, totally dad music. But, like, uh, yeah, I'm like, that's the shit I listen to, you know what I mean? And to this day, it's like... That's the shit I listen to. So, you know, I, I don't think I would have put the stickers on my lunchbox because I would have been embarrassed by it. But, um, yeah, I was into dad music when I was 10. I think that's, I think if I had to give a simple answer, that's the answer. Just right dad, there. Music. I really, dad music. The classics, you know, like I was really starting to fuck with classic rock in a big way. And, I mean, that's, you yeah. know, some of that's still the shit to me, so... I mean, for me, it's funny because, like, so many people, their dads push Grateful Dead, and you obviously know, the listener does not know, but I'm not a big Grateful Dead fan. Not because I don't like it, I just didn't have it. But, like, I was thinking about it, it's like, what was I listening to? And my dad was pushing just ACDC. Like, I can sing in, like, every fucking note of Back in Black. Like, not the song, the album. Like, rock and roll and noise pollution. Like, that was oh dude i can do a great brian johnson uh because i grew up on that. you know my brian johnson story right? yes wait, right. wait wait refresh me humor a couple of hunks <laughs> i when we we played in vancouver about two years ago now and my family was out in vancouver at the time we made a little like family weekend out of it and they were staying at a really really swanky hotel and you know the gym had its own personal trainer 
and uh, you know, my mom is is a total you know total gym hound. Like she'll be in the gym a couple hours every day, and so she makes friends with the trainer, convince him to come to the show. So we played the show. After the show, the trainer comes up to me and he's like, "Come to the hotel gym at 9 a.m. tomorrow." And I was like, you realize what you're asking me to do right now is, you know, <laughs> pretty aggressive. But he's like, come to the at 9 a.m. tomorrow. So I, I go to the gym at 9 a.m. And there he is with Brian Johnson and the bass player from ACDC, who I feel like an idiot because I don't know his last name. But his first name is Cliff. I know that for sure. And I ended up doing a private workout session with Brian Johnson and Cliff, bass player from ACDC followed by a couple glasses of wine at the hotel bar wow. where I just listened to Brian John. I mean, when you're with Brian Johnson, you sit wow. and listen. Yeah, he, for sure. He rips. He just goes. He really mostly talks about racing cars. That's yeah. like, he's way more interested in like. So that would be on his launch box. Music at this point. Yeah. yeah. But that's my Brian Johnson story. That's sick. Yeah. That and Jay Giles Band. I remember I went to a Jay Giles Band concert one time and I was like, all right, I know Centerfold and like Freeze Frame or whatever. And then I, then I like yeah. was sitting there and I go, oh, never mind. I know every single one of these songs because I just grew up with it in the car as we yeah. were driving. And that's totally one of those bands, Jay Giles Band, where it's like, you know the songs. Yeah. But you don't even like, you didn't even realize it was Jay Giles Band, you know? Like, mm-hmm. Like must have got lost. Oh man! I Dude, that was the first. Mo- that was the first monologue that I had. Uh, like, so I'm an actor. That was the first monologue that I ever memorized. <laughs> like I can do the entire must have got lost intro on like the live version, top to bottom. It's one of the things that I can pull out at a party. Legendary. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking through my my <laughs> my questions that I had written down, and like some are not right related. And the, the question is, what even, are they? Well, the question's not even finished. It's the last one I wrote down. It just says, "If I were to pull open your computer search history," and then I just didn't finish the question. What, what I mean, honestly, I what's don't the, even use my computer. All right, so on your phone, you're Googling. What, what's, the, what's something that you've Googled recently? Um, well, I just bought Animal Crossing for the Switch. Yeah. Um, I need some escapism. For sure, right no. <laughs> I, and that sounds like perfect. So my most recent search was definitely um, – what do I do in Animal Crossing? Because I guess I forgot that you don't do anything in that game. <laughs> just a game that you like, just press A. <laughs> you just walk around and talk to these little animals, which is, is getting actually pretty enjoyable. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, obviously right now a lot of um, coronavirus shit. Yeah. Um, which sucks. I will say for you listeners whoever it is um i'm not handling quarantine well (laughs) i'm really not enjoying it at all i was really excited and i'm not just saying this um i was really fucking excited to tour and to record and i felt like we are in i mean i we still are but i you know we're in such a place of momentum right now and it sucks to be in this situation, but the whole world is in this situation. So yeah, um, I know, I know you all understand and we'll, uh, we'll do what we can, but it, it sucks. And hopefully so. you are quarantined and this brings you a little bit of levity. Just listening to this. I'm having a great time. All right. Back to ripe questions. What is your favorite tune to play live that you've, like recent tour, just 2020 favorite tune to play live. Which one was yeah. just doing it for you? Does it have to be like originals covers? No, it can be anything. Yeah. The one that you're hit. I can't really pick one, so I'm sure. going to give a two part answer. That's fine. Um, I really do love playing First Time Feeling because it's a real challenge for me. Yeah. You listen to the recording and there's like hardly any drums mm-hmm. on it, but a lot of the things that are happening, I, you know, I'm triggering with the pad. My, yeah. Dude. SPD sample pad so you know in the chorus for instance it's like I'm playing 
the drum groove with my right hand and I'm actually triggering bass notes with my left hand mm -hmm. because Nadav is playing like a bass line and I'm hitting the low end notes to outline the chord changes so it's a lot of fun for me so i'm sort of like you know that just it is a lot going on yeah for me in that song it's a real challenge that takes you know a lot of focus for me to to execute properly so i, I really do enjoy that that's it uh, right now i've been really loving playing who are you yeah who cover Did. you know back to what i was saying before it's sort of like giving 10 year old me like for sure. the satisfaction of doing some of that crazy shit that keith moon does that's so um, i remember yeah. so someone i don't know who but someone recorded the pittsburgh show like the first one of this recent tour and put it up onto archive and i just i didn't even know it was going to be one of your new covers and i just saw it on the set list and i like knew that i had the audio in front of me and i was just like don't do it dude you just need to hear it. like because i didn't want to hear it not live for the first time i heard it did you do it no dude i can show it with strength yeah i believe it i mean i did rip the new uh arrangement of Carol Lee like 10 times though yeah, you like it? Do you like Dude, it? Dude, I love it. Yeah, that's really fun to play, too. Dude. That's a lot of fun. I also, yeah. just because we're on the subject that I love what you guys did to talk to the moon, just because you get to just <laughs> rage. <laughs> 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 like, one of my favorite things, like, so, like, uh, one of, like, bands that I loved going to see was Umphreys. Like, not just because it's a jam band, like, with fish, it's just like, oh, yeah, you never know what you're going to get, but, like, Umphreys will go dark from time to time, yeah. and I dig it. <laughs> like, you can bang a little head. Yeah. And sure, you're, you're, just, oh, yeah. you're just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm supposed to go out and see them, Pigeons, and Corey Wong in June, but who knows if the world will be alive in June. I fucking hope so, man. Yeah. I think we're still going to go out there anyway, but, you know. Yeah. Whatever. All right, qu while I figure out, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, okay, I do have a question for you. Sure. You know, for anyone that doesn't know, you know, there's it was a pretty stark difference between what you were able to do last year and what you were able to do this year in terms of um, leading the gang and being at shows and, you know, what has it been like sort of remotely being green headband guy while you're a full-time drama teacher in, you know, Palm Beach? Well, I mean, obvious first answer is I want to be on tour every single day. And like, you know, that it's like I want to be at every single show and it kills me that I can't be at shows. The cool thing is with everything in life, like, when there is a vacuum for something, something new comes, you know? And just the fact that it didn't die out and that the people who, you know, joined this, my little goofy part of your fandom, at, like, we're like, no, 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 we got it. We'll take it. Can, and, like, it gave people opportunities to take the lead and, like, kind of share a little bit of that experience you know not so much as you know how close I got to become with you guys which is like but like at the same time like there are still some people like I mean like I know Olivia went to Olivia shout out Olivia uh went to like six shows in the fall and like was like hanging and chilling and like she crushed it and like then, like, then there's people that who are going to their first show, and they're like, hey, I'm going to my first show. I have, like, 20 green headbands. Like, what do I need to do? And I was like, do you want to run the account? And they're like, yeah, that would be incredible. And I'm like, sweet. Like, go for it. And then I've had people be like, yo, like, I'm going to be green headbanding, but, like, I really don't like being on my phone during shows. And I'm like, that's totally cool. Like, be present, but boogie your face off. So... It's kind of, you know, I obviously miss it. I just miss hanging with you guys, and especially because the shows that I've been to, it's been like, hey, okay, uh, show, cool, hey, well, see you later, bye. Um, well, that's pretty hectic, yeah. Yeah, 
and it's just like and they've just been like huge shows like for you guys so you know you have you're getting pulled in so many different directions so it's not like we're driving from Fayetteville Arkansas to Oklahoma and you guys are like this is such a drive and we're going through the middle of nowhere America nothing against that part of America but like I'm sitting in the van and I'm like this is the coolest thing ever and I'm just like the happiest boy in the world so like yeah dude just get me back on tour is I guess <laughs> I guess like something like really cool came out of it and the fact that I was able to take a real job and leave this like physically and it still continued and I had people donate money for the House of Blue show so that I could pass out green headbands. Like, so crazy. <laughs> it was so, so crazy. And if you're listening to this, because I'm sure you're one of the people that is actually going to be listening to this, if you donated money, you are the most incredible person in the world. I'm speaking to each of you individually. You are so, so cool because I'm just a fan and the fact that you trust me in what I'm doing to take your money and spend it in good. And if you were at the show, you saw a shit ton of green headbands. So, and then like, I like also like, it's so funny because with coronavirus now, this is what happens when you give me the floor and you ask me a question. I just don't shut no, up. I, I'm, I'm safe. But like, this is your podcast, my man. People forget. People forget. <laughs> but like, I've like, said like like sammy ray was doing like a little live stream and she threw out her venmo and so i just was like yo here's a couple bucks from the green headband gang like because you know i got in so much money and i spent it all but it's just like we're gonna do a tour thing sometime so but just want to let you know our fans are here out here supporting you that just reminded me that not only are we not going on tour but we won't be going on tour with Sammy Ray, which I was really excited about. Yeah. Which is a fucking bummer. We'll make it happen. It'll so happen. Shout out to Sammy Ray for being dope. Yeah. Coronavirus has fucked the entire industry. You know, we rescheduled our tour to May and then we just canceled it. So, um, yeah, I, you know, it's hard to say what is what and when will be when. So, yeah. At Sam Hellerman on Venmo. Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is not what's happening here, everybody. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. You guys, you guys are killing it. But so, green headband's tight, I guess. Like the fact yeah, that I'm still good. doing this is, and I literally just like followed you around in my mom's car for three days, and it's, that, that's amazing by the way, that it was in your mom's car. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. What a, what a great nugget to the story. Well, the, part of that story is because I moved to New York, and then the second day of living in New York, I drove to get a mattress off of Craigslist in Crown Heights and totaled my car. Had to call an, <laughs> U- had to call an Uber to come and get the mattress out of my car. And... So then I just didn't have a car. Like, imagine if I did all this and I had my beautiful Ford Escape, which I miss so, so much. Also wouldn't have had to rent a car and drive it to Northampton for that show for your birthday and then got that car towed. Oh, my God. (laughs) We'll stare green headband horror stories. But, yeah, there's a lot of things that... There's many times during all this that I've said, okay, well, this is the last time that I'm going to be able to do this, and now we're recording a podcast. Here you are. <laughs> here we are. Here, here we all are. So, it's a good yeah. time. Well, let's say thank you for your time. It, peace. Blessings. Remember the Alamo. <laughs> all right. Goodbye.